I love 2 Peter 3, 9. Bible says that God is not slow to fulfill his promise as some claim slowness, but he is patient. He is patient towards you. He is patient towards you and you and you and you and you and you. He is patient towards everyone in this building, including myself wishing that none should perish and that all should come to repentance. I love that verse because it reminded me of how patient God was towards me. If I was God and God was me, I wouldn't be so patient. I wouldn't be so patient. In 1993, I gave my life to Jesus. Listen to this. Back in the day, we called these events campañas. And as a matter of fact, my father-in-law is still a pastor. He's pastor of El Templo Biblico in Alton. And as a matter of fact, as I'm speaking right now, they are still having campañas. They still put that on their calendars at, as things to do. Big tent revivals. They would have these evangelists go out and preach the gospel. My first night, my girlfriend, the girl that I was dating, who is now my wife, we'll get to her in a little bit. She invited me to a campaña. I was like, what is that? What do you guys do there? She invited me. First night, stuck out like a sore thumb. I knew I didn't belong there. Everybody was staring at me because I did not look like your typical person who went to church. Evangelist presented the gospel. Day one, I rejected Jesus. Day two, rejected Jesus again. Day three, started thinking, you know what? I think I might need to make this decision. But I knew that if I made this decision, I couldn't leave the church and go out drinking with my, with my friends. I couldn't do my own thing. Day three, rejected Jesus. Day four, rejected Jesus. Day five, last day. Rejected Jesus last day. God, in the Old Testament, sends Matthew, sends Nathan to, to King David to tell King David to repent of his sins. And that night, day five, after I rejected Jesus, God sent the evangelist my way, face to face. And he said, son, do you want to receive Jesus? I said, you know what, this whole week, I've been listening to you, your words, been, been listening to how you speak of this Jesus. I said, you know what? I'm empty in the inside. I'm lost. I'm so confused. I don't know who I am. I don't know where I'm going. I have no absolutely any idea of where I belong. At that moment, I needed Jesus. I don't know if many of you here tonight feel that way, but that night I knew I needed to make a decision because I was tired of waking up in the morning after partying the whole night, not knowing where I was or who I was the night before, feeling sick to my stomach. I was happy the night before, but in the morning, I still was empty. And in 1993, October of 1993, 17 years ago, I made a decision for Christ. That decision ultimately changed my life. Not only on the outside, but on the inside. February the 8th, 1997, my beautiful wife, Lily Contreras, on that day, she said, I do. I said, really, you do? She says, I do. I said, for rich or for poor? She says, I do. Sickness and in health? She says, I do. Forever? She said, I do. Now listen to this. My wife is, is, is amazing. I honestly do not deserve her. God gave her to me. I said, are you sure, God? I don't, I don't deserve her. She's amazing. I said, I trust you. I want to bless you. You don't deserve her. But here. Listen to this. On her wedding night, the most intimate time between a husband and a wife. My wife was prepared. She said that she had 
been praying for me. She said that she had been waiting for me and that she had saved herself for me. And that night, she gave me a gift. She gave me her virginity. That night, I showed up with nothing. Showed up empty-handed with nothing. Absolutely nothing. The regret, the pain that I had lived a prodigal life, a wasteful life, serving myself and my flesh and my desires. But when my wife said, I do, she said, I can't change your past. We had talked about this even before we got married. She knew that I wasn't a virgin when we got married. She knew way in advance. But when she said, I do, she was saying, I can't change your past but I want to be part of your future, is what she was telling me. She wanted to grow old with me. She wanted to spend the rest of her days with me. She wanted to start a family with me. Only me. Exclusively me. Just me.